Welcome back, everybody. This is Kelly at the Paint Chronicles, and I'm excited to have you here with me today. Today, we are going to paint an orange lily spray. I've sketched out already the painting that we're going to do. This time, I like to sketch it a little bit since it's a little smaller and more detailed. I just took an eraser and I erased it to make the lines thinner because general belief is that once you paint over top of pencil, you're unable to then erase the pencil. So you try and make those lines as light as you can. As you can see, I sketched out a pot and some stems and some leaves, and we're gonna go ahead and give this a try. The leaves of the orange lily spray are more of a blue green. So I'm starting out with a blue and then I'm going to add some dark green in here. I will get better with the official names. I promise I'm still learning through this process. And also somebody asked me, why do I keep a little piece of paper to the side? It's because I like to test the colors before I go ahead and put them on the actual painting because then I don't I have less to correct I guess you could say and just taking a deep breath there before I go in because I'm not necessarily really good with detailed straight lines I'm trying my best here feeling pretty good about it I am definitely more of a loose style painter but I love the details and I love the tiny delicate paintings so we're giving this a try today one thing I did do when I erased some of the pencil lines that you don't want to do that I did do was brush away the eraser little dust pieces with your hand. What happens when you do that, and I don't know if you can notice it on the paper here through the camera, it leaves little tiny smudge marks. If you have a old makeup brush or a any kind of brush, any brush, or even just lift the paper up and give it a good shake, it's much better to do than to wipe it like I just did with my hand. I did that out of habit and I know better. So the way I'm painting the lily is a little bit of a more minimalist, um, modern look, not necessarily the realistic one. We're going for very minimal. We're going for very clean. Just getting the leaves in here and the stem, stems sometimes stick out a little bit farther than the leaves I've noticed in the pictures that I've referenced. And when I was looking up information on lilies, because they're beautiful flowers, they come in many different colors. Uh, mostly I think people think of white lilies, which can be known for two different extremes, uh, wedding lilies or funeral lilies. So I decided to go with the orange one. Some of the common names for lily is orange lily, fire lily, Jimmy Baines lily, tiger lily, St. John's lily. And there's also a European lily with underground bulbs, but they're mostly native to Europe and Asia. Lilies are a perennial plant. They have the ability to grow back, back each spring from their bulbs without needing to be replanted. But as I learned, you do need to take correct and careful care of them to get them to continue to grow and bloom every year. I gotta tell you, I, I think I mentioned before, I don't have a green thumb, but I really do enjoy painting flowers. If you are someone who's interested in growing them, they are typically in the sun at least half a day. They need to have sufficient amount of sun, but if you live in an area with intense heat, they like partial shade as well in the afternoon. They need a high quality soil with lots of organic matter and strong roots. They need the soil to remain moisture, but not too wet. 
Sounds complicated to me. I am forever overwatering things. If you plant the lily bulbs, you want to space them apart 8 to 12 inches so they have lots of space to grow and thrive. My neighbor has a great collection of lilies and they're beautiful every year. We go over and look at his back garden. Now I'm mixing up some orange. I wanted to make it an orange, but a kind of a, a yellow orange. So I'm going through and testing, but yet I want to keep that stronger orange that I have at the top left. And then I'm adding a little bit of a lighter yellow to lighten it up a little bit. And as you can see on my test paper there, it gets a little bit lighter with each one. And as I've mentioned before, it gets even lighter on the paper as it dries. And tapping the paper just to make sure it really is dry. So in case I get some of the orange on the green, they won't run and bleed into each other. Now, the only thing I didn't sketch out ahead of time were the actual flower petals which I normally do do, but I decided that they're so close together, the lines of the pencil would have kind of just gone over top of each other. So I decided to wing it. And they kind of split up a little bit. And I'm happy with that color, so I'm gonna stick with the middle one. I was gonna combine the two colors a little bit more, but as I look at it on paper, I'm liking how it's not quite so orange because of what I have planned to do with the pot that they're in down at the bottom there. There's an old folk story about a lily. It's about a hermit who saw a tiger that was wounded by an arrow. The hermit helped the tiger by removing the arrow and the tiger and the her hermit, Herman, Herman, the hermit, quickly became friends. When the tiger died later in life, the hermit used his magical powers to turn him into a lily. Then when the hermit died, the tiger lily started spreading spreading and looking for his friend, the hermit. Tiger lilies are still searching and spreading around the globe ever since. So there's a little story about tiger lilies and that part of the world. So I'm continuing here, painting out these petals, trying not to be too courageous and make them too big, but keep them dainty and small. I'm really enjoying these detailed Nike Pro, Nick Pro brushes that I received. I think this is the fourth time I've used them and I just have not stopped using them since then. They're really good for details. And if you notice, I hold my brush very closely down by the brushes. And that piece that is triangular shaped to help you get a grip on the brush really helps me stabilize the brush. I remember when I was a kid, I used to hold pencils the same exact way and they would put these rubber triangular shape pieces on the pencil to help you learn how to hold the pencil correctly. It reminds me of the same. Now I'm going to go ahead and mix up a darker orange, a more vibrant orange, while I wait for the petals to fully dry and finish them off. 
I want to make the pot an orange color, but slightly different, a little more vibrant. Give it a little more flair. So as I'm painting the pot, I'm trying to keep in mind that I want to have a light source. So one side of the pot, I'm going to paint darker than the other. And now all of this is dry on dry. So you have a lot of control over your brush and your paint. And so I'm going to start making it darker down at that corner there and work it up to the side. And then I'm just adding some water to it to add to the white space that I've left. Now, because this is dry on dry, I'm finding it hard to kind of blend and make a nice smooth transition. So I'm going to give it a little bit of time and work at it a little bit. It just dried super fast. This is Academy 100% cotton rough grade paper which I have to tell you, I do not see much of a difference between the cold press and the rough. I was comparing them earlier before I started the painting, expecting to find a big difference, and I really didn't. And now I'm adding a dark green stem to each one of the flowers here to give it a little bit of detail. And we are almost done. I want to thank you all for being here today. Thank you for watching. I think this was a fun one for me. I learned a lot of fun stuff. Got to play with new paper. And some colors I don't normally use. Thank you very much. And you all have a great day. We'll see you in the next video.